If you've loved living in the Foothills Reserve any time in the past 10 years, this message from two of your board members is really important. We need to vote to keep them on the board, and they're here to tell you why. Hello, I'm Paula Dene. I have been on the Foothills Master Board for um, 10 plus years. Hi, I'm Mike Blee Master. I've been on the Foothills Master Reserve for about six years. And uh, this evening we're actually going to talk a little bit about um, some facts that are true and not true. There are several people that have been out petitioning for us to be removed from the board and we actually wanted to take this opportunity to get the facts correct. So any day now you're going to be receiving a ballot in the mail. The ballot is an opportunity for your voice in the neighborhood. So your voice is to keep Mike and I on the board or to remove us from the board. So several people that are going to be receiving ballots, you've already signed the petition to have us removed. So this is our opportunity to plead our case of why we should stay on the board. So we're going to go point for point on all the facts or the information that was given to you, whether it be through the petition um, on the side of the road where they were doing that or they were going door to door. These are the top five statements that Paula and Mike are going to be addressing in this video. They're the things that they feel are important that we as a community know the truth about. They're not just opinions or even half-truths. These can all be verified by documentation and facts. Um, it's not bankrupt. It's not bankrupt at all. So we, over the years, have been very frugal with the amount of money that we spend. Mm -hmm. um, the only probably thing to most people that they see is where we spend more money than they think we should is, is the Halloween party. That is the only thing. So over the last 10 years, your HOA dues have only been $29 a month for everything that we've done for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. The only reason that the dues were increased to $34 is to make up for the amount of money that was coming, what was the words? Uh, the income from the property that the yes. that ADOT uh, tore down, the 21 homes, so we're not getting those assessments currently for those, so we had to increase it $5 to help make up for that loss of or, income. Yeah, offset the, the cost. So realistically, we're able to sustain ourselves still at that minimal amount just for that reason. And the only reason that the increase was is because we had lost the 21 homes. And with that said, we in our we have what's called a reserve study to make sure that we hold enough money back for repairs as time goes on. And with the reserve study, we are pulling out each month 3,000 to be put in the reserve study. And it's going to end up making us um, We'll be whole by the end of the year. Basically, uh, we just approved our budget last week at the Master Association. Right now, we're about $30,000 under the supposed wheelhouse of where our reserves need to be per the reserve study. The only reason we're short $30,000 is from the thousand year flood from two years ago where we went over budget about $60,000. Right and that was to clean up all the washes in the neighborhood and things that were just necessary. Yeah, but it wasn't just the cleanup portion of it. It was the replacement of we lost the curbing well, the around. Sign. Yeah, the curbing, we lost all the rocks, the plants were ripped out, and then again it washed down all the way to the very end and then exited out onto Pecos. So anything in the track or the alignment of where the water would come down is it washed everything away. So it wasn't just the, the front loaders removing it, that included all the cleanouts of the um, all the culverts throughout the entire community. Right. I mean, it, it, it's all that stuff. Regardless, it was a once in a lifetime We're uh, storm, right? And the we had the funds there to take care of it. That's why the reserves. Right. And here we are this year. Uh, we're putting three thousand dollars a month into the reserves. At the end of this year our reserves will be totally full. We will have over $100,000 in our account. So we are an fully extremely funded. healthy, fully funded HOA. Right. We are not even close. This is paying all of our expenses. We're putting an extra $3,000 a month. So right. the fact that people are saying that we're bankrupt or going to be bankrupt in six years is absolutely false. Right.
do Paula and I have some kind of financial interest in the 202 going through? I'll speak for myself first. I do not. I have several businesses that I run. None of them are affected by the freeway. None of them will I benefit financially whatsoever. There were claims earlier on about Paula and Derek having five acres west of Calabria. I'll let Paula explain all that, but those again were accusations and they're absolutely false. Yeah, I think that um, so much of it was talked about that uh, my husband and I, which is Derek, was going to have financial gains based upon the freeway coming through because we owned um, a parcel of land. And the parcel of land is owned by an LLC that is similar in name to one of our LLCs. So in if you go into the Corporation Commission and look up the LLC, it shows that our name was on it originally and then it was dissolved because what happened is when we went to go get our EIN number um, through the federal government, they said, hey, you know what, you can't have that um, maybe statewide, but you can't have it federal wide because it's too close to another one. Just so happens that it's a, a company that's similar in name that's out of a different state that does own the five parcels of land. So my husband and I are not going to financially benefit from it. Um, there was a couple of other LLCs that were put in there. Um, some of our, we have some rental property that the LLCs actually own the rental property just for tax benefits and that's it. But there's nothing and we have no financial gains whatsoever from the freeway coming through. So that should answer that question. Both of us do not have yeah. that. And we both stated that in the December board meeting when asked by one of the homeowners. Right. So I know the conversation has been made that a lot of times that, uh, that us being on the HOA board, that we've done nothing about the alignment of the 202. That's not true. Um, approximately nine years ago, ADOT had approached us about that um, they wanted to get together and um, take a liaison from each one of the neighborhoods that would be affected by the alignment of 202. We appointed somebody to be that position for us. That person would go to meetings um, and at some point during that process, they had to come up with either build or no build. There wasn't an option to say, move it off of the alignment. So our vote was no build for the 202 alignment down Pecos Road. That is on the ADOT website, so you can go in and verify that. The next thing is, is the, the conversation recently was is that we had a secret meeting with ADOT. There was no secret meeting with ADOT. We did have a meeting with ADOT, but in the meeting, the meeting was only going to be discussing the demo of the 21 homes that were affected in the master community. So in that meeting, there was um, Cliff from Kachina Management that was part of that meeting. At the time, Dave Slaney was one of the members on the board and myself, and then three people from ADOT. One was a PR, one was construction, the other um, lady, I'm not quite sure what her position was. They explained to us of the security, 24-hour security, um, how the buses were going to be affected by it because of the debris coming down. A lot of the debris coming down Shaughnessy was from Calabria. We were able to do a lot of ours where they removed a portion of the fence and was able to go out that direction. So the thing is, is that the meeting was only about the safety for the community and also safety with the guard and then also the debris to keep our children safe that were on the buses or there was going to be a lot movement within the community but it was not a secret meeting no it wasn't a secret meeting um actually adot didn't approach us as much as adot approach actually um the property manager which was cliff at the time and then Cliff then approached us that said, hey, ADOT has approached us. There is a meeting coming up. It's about the, the demolishing of those 21 homes. And um, we think this is an opportunity that we need to have that discussion. And so from there, the meeting was set in place. So there's been some concern about whether we've been proactive in the community about what things are going on with the 202. I can tell you that uh, one of my main concerns is the extension of Chandler 
over across the 640 acres. I went to a meeting, I believe it was in beginning of January at the Pecos Village Center regarding this and the city of Phoenix was going to put in a two lane road to get us there. One road one way, one road the other way. That's it. And the concern that I brought up is if there's an accident out there, it's going to clog up the road. We might not be able to get around it. We have four lanes on Pecos. We should be replacing like for like. They hadn't done any kind of traffic study, uh, any kind of emergency vehicle study, anything for us out here. And, and if you guys can think about this, you know, there's no lights all the way until Chandler and Desert Foothills Park work. Right. Can, can you imagine all of these house, all of these cars in the morning going down Chandler Road? You get to Desert Foothills and uh, or Desert Foothills Parkway in Chandler. There's one light there. I can guarantee you there are going to be 40 cars back, and you know you'll have to wait six lights before you can get there because right now there's no other way to get get through there at this point. So. We voiced some concern for that and they've kind of halted it. They're in the middle of doing traffic studies. You can see the cones out here, things like that. I mean, that's just one of the things that we're constantly going and doing above and beyond, you know, our HOA duties to, to make sure. I mean, we all live here like the rest of you guys to make sure that we're being taken care of. They wanted to put two lanes in. We want four. They wanted to put two lanes in later from a developer so we'd have construction in the next year and then two years later when a developer came in we'd have construction again so these are some of the current activities that we're constantly getting involved with to help be proactive to keep us ahead of the curve well i think also on the proactive portion we um, ended up we hired an attorney to mm -hmm. make sure that um, since we obviously don't read con i don't read contracts for a living so i couldn't read a contract so what we did is we hired an attorney that's going to be um, working directly with ADOT to make sure that the, um, the land that they're going to be, um, what's the word, looking through eminent domain that they're going to be taking from us. There's going to be ramadas, there's going to be what we call natural open space, so NOS area. You'll probably hear us refer to that every once in a while, especially at a meeting. Um, a lot of the areas back where our walking path is is going to be taken by a dot so we want to make sure that we are compensated for that land right. properly so we've hired an attorney so we'll get an appraisal to make sure we get fair market value right. all that stuff right and then plus if it gets to the point where there is no build and the freeway doesn't go through we would like to have first option to take the land back so if a dot or the city of phoenix takes the land now and it's now deeded to them we want the first option to go ahead and have it deeded back to us or give us the first option to get it so that it comes back into the master is what we're after so the attorney is working on that also so we've had the 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 alignment of Chandler Boulevard the hiring the attorney to make sure so we feel as though that we're being proactive as board members instead of reactive at this point It really bothers me that people would say that uh, we would financially benefit from a com uh, community party. It's just not true. It started off small and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then suddenly we were cutting checks for five, six thousand dollars out of our own personal accounts in order to get deposits, things like that. And then we would have to send in our receipts. Mm -hmm into the HOA management company and then they would send us the money. We don't have, we are not, I want to make sure this is clear because we are not in control of any of the funds of the HOA. It's all through the management company. Every single thing that we do is documented, sent in, sent back out. Right, and I think that uh, with that said then, also they, um, you know, the comments have been made that, you know, they look at the receipts and they see on the receipts that we have gift cards. The gift cards were used as prizes for the children for games or the adults for games. Um, they also were, um, you know, there was just some of those types of expenses. And yes, sure, there was quite a bit of money that was spent, but again, and we're asking for money back. Yes, there were checks that were made out to us, but it's just like any time that you expense any kind of a business. You pay for it up front, and then they 
re we receive a check back. So nobody would give us any money until we provided those receipts. So we did not have any financial gains to it. So if you see where the, I know that some people have been showing emails that said, hey, cut me a check for $20,000 or that type of thing. Okay, yeah, we've given you receipts for that. And you have to remember, we're putting them on our charge cards, we're taking them out of our checking account, and you know what, there's that lag time. So, you know, it's not $500, it's $20,000 that's coming out of your bank account. And you know what, when it gets to be four weeks or five weeks and the bills come due, you'd like to get that $20,000 back into your account. And I think the, you know, the main thing about this party, uh, it may seem like a lot of money, but we can afford it. The funds are there where we can afford the party. Yeah, and during that time when we were doing it, the, the comment was made that we spent $81,000 over five years for this party. So my thing is, if you take $81,000, divide it by five years, at the time there were 611 houses, it works out to approximately you know $26 and some change. So say, easy math, say $27 per household for the party that was set um, in, in motion. And then for 4, 000, or 2014, 2015, there was ob obviously a lot of... Um, we had a lot of storm damage, so yeah. you know we decided as a board to be f fiscally responsible to, to not have the party. There was a lot of people I know calling me, and I'm sure Paula as well, saying, we still wanna have the party, we still wanna have the party, and at that time we were still doing cleanup um, a year later uh, in a lot of these areas and spending a fair amount of money. So, you know, we decided not to have it for two years, you know, and we have another year coming up and we'll put it out there to the community to see if they want to have the party again because honestly, most of the people I talked to had a great time. Their kids have a great time. Their kids talk about it all the time on how they, when we have an Halloween party, mom, when we have an Halloween party, dad, and right. That's the reason we started it, was to create families out here. And to bring we the still community think together. it's a great yeah. way to bring the community together. Right. We want you to know the facts. That's our goal of Paula and I tonight. There is a small but very loud group of people who are not giving you all the facts. Yeah, they're not. Um, I think that's what's happening right now is that they're on the side of the road petitioning, which is something that uh, it's just not very. We're not going to do it. Yeah, we're it's not, not going to happen. So with this video tonight that we're doing is that we're giving you the facts. So all of our information that you can verify where their information, they're only giving you bits and pieces of it and it's not verified. And the way that we know that it's not verified is because just what we talked about earlier, one about um, that we're financially gaining from things and down through the list. So we need to get back to business and we can't get back to business until this situation is over. So you're going to be receiving a ballot in your mailbox and we need you to check to save us check to keep us and they're already postmarked you really need to make sure that you use the envelope that was sent to you because it's marked um, that um, your lot number and that type of thing so with Mike and I we're really hoping that you will check the box that says keep us both Mike and I love being on the board I mean I'm speaking for you but I mean no, I, know I do myself. I mean we, we love being on the board we love being part of this community that's the reason why we've been on it for so long and right. we, we we're asking for your help right now right and you're gonna get this in the next day or two and we just ask that you check the box right away throw it in the mail immediately because we don't have that much time right. so it has to be done within a couple of days and then we go from there and we move on to the sunset Right. And we really need to get back to business. So and we're not able to do it because right now we're spending most of our time dealing with this um, situation instead in able to move forward with the things that need to be done for our community. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, we really hope that we've given you the information to give us a yes vote for keeping Paula and Mike on the board. Right. Thank you. Thank you.